welcome Biology 440, General Microbiology Laboratory folks. Um, this video will be on Chapter 5 in the lab manual on microscopy. Um, there's a lot to talk about, so we'll probably break this down into two or three shorter videos. Um, but just starting on the first page, the introduction to Chapter 5 microscopy in our lab manual, some um, important terms to cover. So magnification, um, which is the function of a microscope, is the process of enlarging an object's apparent size uh, relative to its real size. So we talk about the magnifying ability or magnifying power of microscope lenses, and we'll also be talking about total uh, magnification. So in describing um, the simplest um, classification of microscopes, the simplest microscope um, simple microscope would consist of a single lens. You could think of it like as a magnifying um, uh, glass. Um, an example would be the simple microscopes that Anton von Leeuwenhoek, the father of microbiology, used to, um, to observe and report the existence of his little animalcules, his little microorganisms. Most microscopes today are what we call compound microscopes, meaning that they have more than one lens. And the simplest example of a compound microscope would be in this little cartoon. Let's say that we have a tube, and on one end of the tube there's one lens, and this is the lens that we're going to look through closest to our eye. So this is called the ocular lens, uh, ocular referring to eye. And most microscopes, the magnifying power of the ocular lens is 10x, or an increase in the um, apparent diameter of the organisms 10 times. And then at the opposite end of, the, of our little microscope tube, the second lens, which, be, which would be closest to our specimen, our, our, um, our microbe, our object of interest, um, since this lens is closest to our object of interest, we would call this the objective lens. And we'll see that on our light compound microscopes, we have four different objective lenses. When we're using our microscopes, we want to know what's the total magnification. And total magnification is calculated by taking the ocular magnification, which is usually 10x, and multiplying by um, the objective lens magnification, which we'll go over here. So again, um, it's important that you can calculate total magnification using the four different objective lenses on our scopes. So again, total magnification is calculated by magnifying power of the objective lens times magnifying power of the ocular lens. And the ocular lens, remember, um, in most microscopes, the magnifying power is 10x. So the, um, the first three objective lenses we're, we're going to um, talk about is the lowest power objective lens is called the 4x, or scanning lens. So if the scanning lens um, magnifying power is four-fold, 4x, then total magnification would be, let's say, so we take 4x times 10x, that would be 40x. So using the scanning lens, total magnification would be 40x. Um, the next lens is the low power lens. The low power objective lens magnifies tenfold, 10x. So total magnification would be 10x times 10x or 100x. So total magnification using the low power objective would be 100x. The next most powerful objective lens is called the high dry lens. Um, it magnifies 40 fold, so total magnification would be 40 times 10, which would be 400 fold, 40, uh, 400x. And then the most powerful objective lens on our light microscopes is called the oil immersion lens. And we'll describe later um, uh, why we use a high quality oil called immersion oil with this lens. The oil immersion lens magnifies 100 fold. So total magnification with the oil immersion lens would be 100 times 10 or a thousand fold magnification. So with our light compound microscopes, the highest magnification we have would be a thousand fold or a thousand X with our light microscope. To get higher magnification, we'd have to move to electron microscopes, which unfortunately here at Sac City College, we don't have an electron microscope. All right. So what we'll next do is take a look at a, a, a labeled photo from the photo atlas. So we can just briefly go over the parts of the microscope. And it will be important that we can identify the different parts of our microscope and what the function is. Okay, so we'll use this labeled um, photo. 
And so here we can see much fancier than our, our little compound microscope consisting of two lenses and a tube. So we'll just work from top to bottom. So the microscopes you'll be using are called um, binocular, um, meaning two ocular lenses, binocular microscopes. So here we have our two ocular lenses. And we'll discuss how we can um, focus um, the right eye separately from the left eye. Usually the correction for the left eye and right, right eye are different. So um, as part of that discussion later, we'll talk about how here, this would be the left ocular down at the base, or so it's called the diopter adjustment ring. This is gonna let us focus the um, left eye separately from the right eye. So we'll have nice clear focus for both our eyes and that's gonna reduce eye strain and reduce headaches. And um, some folks who get dizzy looking through the microscope, it should help uh, reduce that, that kind of dizzy or um, feeling that can make some people sometimes want to throw up, which we don't want you doing in lab. Okay, now if we move on down the arm here, we see the arm, this is, um, we'll be grasping the arm to help move our microscope from one place to the other. And then we'll move over this way and we'll see here is um, what's called a rotating nose piece or um, sometimes it's called a turret. And it's on this rotating nose piece or turret that will have our four different objective lenses. Um, the shorter the lens, the lower the magnifying uh, ability. So here we can just make out this is the 4x, the scanning lens. And then as magnifying power increases, the lens is going to get longer and longer. And that means when we start working with our high dry lens or our oil immersion lens, that we have a very long objective lens. It, it looks like it's almost going to teach our microscope slides. We'll have to be really careful not to ram our microscope slides into the high dry and oil immersion lens. And then um, continuing, um, continuing with our microscope, we see that this platform is the stage. And I like to think of microbiology as being great theater, great drama. So we would say the stage is where all the action is going to occur, where the drama will unfold. And in the middle of the stage, you'll notice on your microscope, there's a hole. And that hole is important because the hole permits light to um, to flow from the base where we have a light bulb in the base is going to flow up through a series of lenses a substage condenser and the light then will be focused by the substage condenser on your specimen on your microscope slide so we always want to make sure that our specimen our microbes of interest on our microscope slide is centered over the hole where the light's going to um, hit the, the specimen here now, the microscope slide is going to be held in place by um, uh, slide clips here, and we have to be really careful not to let those clips, um, uh, we don't want to release them um, so that the clips will smack into the microscope slide. That's a good way for us to break the slides. So we want to be very gentle when we, um, we fit our microscope slides into the slide clips. And a huge advantage on our microscopes is we have a mechanism by which we can precisely move our microscope slides over the surface of the stage. And this mechanism is called the mechanical stage. And we'll see down below the stage, there are two knobs. These are the mechanical stage adjustment knobs. And by rotating these two knobs, we can move our slide um, forward and backward over the stage or from right to left over the stage. So this permits us to uh, precisely move um, our slide so that we can uh, visualize m many fields of view. We want to look at many fields of view of our specimen. As we mentioned, another structure below the stage, um, here is a series of lenses that are going to help to focus the light onto our specimen. This is called the substage, uh, meaning below the stage condenser. So the substage condenser, again, is a series of lenses that will help focus the light on the specimen. That's going to help increase the resolution, the, the clarity um, of the outline of our specimen. So usually when we're looking at bacteria, we want the substage condenser raised, elevated as far as possible to focus a maximum amount of light on our, our specimen. Now, is, is part of that, it almost looks like it's part of the substage condenser. We can see a little lever here. This lever is the um, lever that controls the iris diaphragm. 
And you can think of the iris diaphragm as a series of plates that you can open and close, very similar to the pupil of your eye. So when we want lots of light to strike our microbial specimen, for example, when we're using our oil immersion lens, we want to open the iris diaphragm to get as much light as possible striking our, our specimen. Um, in contrast, if we're looking at um, maybe living microbes that haven't been stained, um, they're going to have very low contrast with their surrounding. We're actually going to reduce the amount of light striking our specimen to increase contrast. So to, one way we could do that is to close down the iris diaphragm to decrease the amount of light striking the object. Another way to increase contrast is to lower the substage condenser to lower the, to decrease the amount of light that's going to strike our specimen. Now moving over, um, moving over here towards the base of the microscope, we see two really important knobs. These are the focus knobs. And there's um, some really important roles we need to remember with the, with, excuse me, with the focus knobs. So the outer knob, called the coarse focus knob, will move the stage up and down in large increments. Um, we only use the coarse focus knob using the short scanning lens and low power lens. We never ever use the coarse focus knob um, when we're using the high dry 4DX lens or the oil immersion lens. When we're using the really long um, high dry and oil immersion lenses, we only use the fine focus adjustment knob. And you'll see that by rotating once or twice, the fine focus adjustment knob raises and lowers the stage and thus your slide in very small increments. So again, the rule is you only use fine focus adjustment knob with the high dry and the oil immersion lens. You never use coarse focus adjustment. We've talked about the control knobs for the mechanical stage. Let's see here. So let us continue down. So on the microscopes, we'll have a control, a rheostat, a variable illumination adjustment, so you can increase and decrease the intensity of light. We'll have an on-off light switch. Um, the bottom portion here is called the base. Um, the illuminator here, this is the, um, uh, the, the pathway through which light um, from the light bulb in the base will exit and move up through the, the iris diaphragm, the substage condenser, strike your specimen. The light then leaving your specimen enters the objective lens and through a series of um, additional lenses and mirrors, it'll pass through the ocular lenses and then those photons of light will strike your retina, um, creating action potentials that will move back to the visual centers of your brain. So each little action potential is a data point and the more data points your brain receives, the more information it has to create a nice, clear um, image of your microbial specimen. So again, to increase um, resolution, we need to deliver as many photons of light to our retina. We want to make as many action potentials as possible. So when we're trying to increase resolution, the clarity of the outline of the subjects, our, our microbes want to increase light, and there's some, a couple of ways we can do that. We can increase um, the variable light control. So for example, on the oil immersion lens, we might be working at the highest setting, say setting 10. We can also open up the iris diaphragm lever here to make sure that we increase the amount of light striking our specimen and thus reaching the eye. And we also want to raise the substage condenser so it's as high as possible. And again, that'll focus light on our specimen. If in contrast, we want to increase um, if, if in contrast, hmm. if in contrast we want to increase contrast, we're going to do the opposite. We want to decrease the amount of light striking the specimen. We're trying to increase the difference between the specimen and the surrounding. So to decrease light and thus increase contrast, we can lower the substage condenser. We can close down the iris diaphragm using the lever, and we can also reduce the light um, using our variable light control or rheostat. Now, what we're going to do is switch over to an actual microscope. This might be um, one that you'll be using in the microbiology lab, or you could use a different model. This is an, an Olympus microscope. These microscopes were bought with money um, donated by Dr. George and May Kambara. Um, uh, Dr. George and May Kambara were students at Sacramento City College in 1935 and 1937. 
and they kindly donated money that bought many of the microscopes we still use here at Sacramento City College. So here's, we're moving over to our Olympus microscope here, and hopefully we can go through the parts. Let me move this so we don't have quite so much background. Just a little more Okie okay, dokie. Okay. All right, so then we could go ahead and maybe do like a little quiz together. So can you identify the structure at the tip of the pointer? Okay, so these would be the ocular and the function. The oculars are gonna magnify um, the image 10 times, all right? You come down here and this, identify the structure at the tip of the pointer. This is the turret or rotating nose piece. And here we'll have a chance to look at those objective lenses. So we'll start with the lowest objective lens or the least powerful objective lens and that's the 4x lens, so magnifies four, fourfold, and you can see it's the shortest lens, all right? So here we have the, the 4x, the scanning lens, all right? And you'll notice that we're gonna change objective lenses by rotating the turret, the nose piece, and you'll hear that little click, and that click's important because it's telling you that now your objective lens is, is in alignment with the lens and mirror system here. The next most powerful objective lens is the low power lens or 10x lens. And we, again, we want to remember that we can use coarse focus adjustment only using the scanning and the low power lens. Okay, and now we're going to rotate to our third objective lens. And you can see that as magnifying power increases, the length of the lens gets longer and longer. So this is the 40x lens, the so-called high dry lens. Okay, do you know what total magnification would be if we're using the high dry lens? Okay, so it would be 40 times 10, so total magnification would be 400, right? Um, and we want to remember that we can only use fine focus adjustment knobs using our 40x lens. Okay? Now, we never use immersion oil on the 40x lens, nor on the 10x lens, nor on the 4x lens, right? We only use immersion oil with our most powerful objective, and that is our oil immersion lens. And here, that black band, that black band is a symbol that we're gonna be using immersion oil on this, our 100X lens or oil immersion lens. And again, we see how long it is. We only use the fine focus adjustment knob with our oil immersion lens. Okay. Um, if we keep going down here, here we see our stage. This is where our Microscope slides will be placed, and I think I forgot to get a microscope slide. So let me see if I can pause this, and I'll get a slide so we can demonstrate. 